Now, to illustrate this technique of trigonometric substitution, we're going to use it to calculate a formula for the area of an ellipse. Now, let's consider an ellipse centered at the origin with long axis of length 2a and short axis of length 2b. And then the standard equation is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal 1. And we want to calculate the area enclosed by that ellipse. And we can see it as 4 times this red area, which we can see as the area under the graph of a certain function from x equals 0 to x equals a. To figure out what function we need to use, we need to solve for y in the equation of the ellipse. And to do that, I will subtract on both sides x squared over a squared, and then multiply both sides by b squared. And I get b squared multiplied by 1 minus x squared over a squared. Writing what's in the parentheses as one fraction with denominator a squared, get a squared minus x squared. Pulling out 1 over a squared, we obtain b squared over a squared multiplied by a squared minus x squared. So y is plus or minus the square root of this quantity, which we can write as plus or minus b over a square root of a squared minus x squared. The plus version corresponds, of course, to the upper half of the ellipse and the minus version to the lower half of the ellipse. So, this area A that we are looking for can be expressed as the integral from 0 to A of B over A square root of A square minus X square. At this point, we could conclude quickly by pulling out the constant b over a and observing, as we have done before in the previous video, that the integral from 0 to a of the square root of a square minus x square is nothing but one fourth of the area of the disk centered at the origin and of radius a. So in other words, it's one fourth of pi a square multiplied by b over a and we would get this pi a b over 4. However, here we're going to consider that we don't even know what the area of a disk is. We want to obtain a general formula for any ellipse just by calculus and treat the disk as a particular case where b equal a equal the radius. So we will recover a formula for the area of a disk, assuming we don't even know it. So to do that, we're going to need trig substitution. And, of course, we have a constant, b over a, multiplied by an integral of root of a square minus x square. So that corresponds to this first row. And therefore, we're going to use a trick substitution x equal a sine of theta, where theta is restricted to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. In that case, dx is a cosine theta d theta. So I'm going to replace in the integral dx by this quantity. And I'm going to pull out the constant, so b over a and a. So I obtain b over a times a multiplied by the integral of root of a square minus a square sine square theta because x is a sine theta multiplied by cosine theta. Now here I have written an equality even though I don't quite have an equality between the two sides because on the left hand side I have a definite integral where the integral is in terms of the variable x varying from 0 to a and on the right hand side we wrote an integral in terms of the variable theta. However, we didn't specify the bounds. So, let's see what we can say about the bounds. When x varies from 0 to a, well, x is a sine theta. So when the angle theta is 0, then x is a sine of 0, so it is 0. And then the angle theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, and when it reaches the value pi over 2, then x becomes a sine pi over 2. In other words, x becomes just a. So in other words, x is going to take all the values from 0 to a as theta increases from 0 to pi over 2. That means that our bounds of integration in terms of theta are from 0 to pi over 2. So now I can cancel out the a in the uh, factor in front of the integral, so I get just b. 
Inside the square root, I can factor out a square. So I get a square multiplied by 1 minus sine square of theta inside the root. And then pull out my a square outside of the root, and I get just a. Now I'm going to use the identity 1 minus sine square is equal to cosine square. And this is what I get under the root. Pulling out the constant a, I get ab in front of my integral. And then the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of square root of cosine square theta multiplied by cosine of theta. Square root of cosine square theta is really absolute value of cosine of theta, but if we restrict ourselves to 0 pi over 2, cosine is positive, and therefore this is just cosine of theta. So we obtain just ab multiplied by the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine square of theta. But this is something that we have looked at already, how to integrate an even power of a trig function like cosine or sine, and the standard trick is to use the double angle formula. Namely, in this case, we can replace this cosine square by 1 plus cosine twice the angle over 2. So this is what we do. We get ab over 2 multiplied by the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Now, an antiderivative is easy to obtain. Antiderivative of 1 is theta and an antiderivative of cosine of 2 theta is 1 half sine of 2 theta. So we have to evaluate this function between 0 and pi over 2. The value at pi over 2 is pi over 2 plus the value of 1 half sine 2 theta at pi over 2, but since sine pi is 0, this is 0. The value at 0 is 0 for theta and 0 for sine, so we get 0. That means we only, need, we only obtain ab over 2 multiplied by pi over 2, in other words, pi ab over 4, as expected with the geometric interpretation that I gave earlier. That is one fourth of the area of the ellipse, and therefore the area of the ellipse is pi ab. And you see that when a is equal to b is equal to the radius, we recover pi r square for the area of a disk of radius r. So, this is your formula for the area of an ellipse. Now turn to the next video to see more examples using trick substitution.